Can you tell us what you're doing here today? Well, right now I'm uh, filling up a hydrogen reactor uh, that is installed in my vehicle here. It's a hydrogen on-demand reactor. And uh, the way it works is uh, you have in here water and electrolyte. Actually, here, let me uh, fill it up fresh so you can really see what's going on. Because it does get dirty after a while, but that's a natural part of the process. All right. So, you know, you're under the hood of a car here. You're not like, it doesn't have to be fucking sanitary or sterile by any means. There's just regular distilled water in the fucking grocery store. And, uh, I don't know where the cap went, but whatever. And, uh, What is an approximation of uh, about a teaspoon of baking soda for electrolyte, okay, so it reacts with electricity. Uh, you never really want to use more than a teaspoon for one liter of water um, because of heat, right? The uh, amount of electrolyte that you add is a direct correlation to the amount of hydrogen you produce, the amount of electricity the reactor will draw. This here is uh, just an acrylic tower, okay, a cross that has little notches every quarter inch. And uh, two coils are wrapped probes that uh, end here at the base. They do not cross pads, okay. And, uh, it goes to the negative terminal of the battery or attaches to the chassis. The other one is a positive wire that connects to the uh, ignition switch of the vehicle. It connects to the ignition switch because you don't want it to produce hydrogen when you're not when the car's not on. So turn the key to start the vehicle. Are you clear? charge electricity in the water, it electrolyzes the water, separating it into a, a gas state. And uh, so right now we're producing hydrogen that's been drawn into the engine via two vacuum hoses. So one vacuum hose, this is a bubbler. So air is drawn through here, it goes down underneath the bubble and mix and vaporize the solution. Okay? And then during uh, idling, your intake manifold, this, this line right here, comes around here. And it tees into a vacuum line that goes directly into the intake manifold right here. It comes from the positive crankcase ventilation valve right here. This constantly refreshes the air in the crankcase and in the intake manifold to uh, and goes into the combustion chamber to explode directly. During idling, you have a higher vacuum here at the PCV. During throttle, when you're driving, you have a higher vacuum right here at your intake. So you tap in at two places. You also have this little uh, PCV or positive crankcase valve ventilation valve uh, enhancer that allows for no water or moisture uh, water vapor from that thing to collect in your engine. So every now and again you open that up and blow off any collected liquid down there. You can see a little bit gooping around. Mine has a little oil in it because my car doesn't run at, you know, 100% optimally. But that's the concept. So the concept behind this here, what's actually, you know, what's going on is um, the uh, hydrogen is being sucked into the engine and uh, it's basically increasing the octane of my fuel 
along with burning off carbon deposits um, and all the other nasties that build up from impure fuels that we use. Uh, so uh, it's raising the octane of the fuel, which in effect makes it explode or combust at a higher uh, at a higher compression rate. So uh, lower octane fuel, especially under high temperatures, will explode before your piston gets to the top dead center and the spark fires, right? So if you explode before you're all the way up there, it moves the piston backwards, forcing the cam to lift it on its own, therefore decreasing the, you know, losing the power from that power stroke. This makes it so the fuel doesn't explode until the spark fires immediately from the distributor in top dead center. Also, we tap into the MAP sensor, which is the manifold absolute pressure sensor that senses through a vacuum hose uh, what's going on inside the cylinder heads and the vacuum pressures uh, inside the vehicle and a number of other things that's a general concept. But we tap in there and are actually able to tell the vehicle you don't need so much fuel because this is also explosive gas. So you're replacing the amount of fuel that you need with explosive gas. If you can hear the engine right now, it's just purring like a little kitty cat. Very low noise, there's no knocking or clicking or pinging or anything like that. I'm running 87 octane fuel in here. Um, you know, again, you have to maintain your vehicle because uh, this only works as well as your vehicle works. So, um, yeah, that's essentially it. Want to tell America any closing thoughts on this? Um, this is just a really good thing for, you know, the public today because, you know, hydrogen, um, uh, Fuel cell vehicles, really, the infrastructure for that is not uh, feasible at this time, you know, on a large scale, maybe in, you know, six to ten years. But, um, you know, in the meantime, let's utilize the oil that we have, let's just stop buying so much. So, through this, in effect, you know, I'm able to, in this vehicle already, I'm getting 60 to 75% better fuel economy uh, in a 5.2 liter V8. Um, so, that means I'm at the pump half the time that I was before. So if everybody gets to this on a whole, on a large scale, and everybody starts going to the pump 50% of the amount of time that we have to already, then that means we only have to purchase 50% of the amount of oil that we currently do across the U.S. This works for diesel vehicles, this works for gas vehicles, it works for carburetor vehicles, it works for fuel injection vehicles. As long as you have a vacuum system and a 12-volt freaking battery in your car, you can use this. Nice. Yeah.